I'm going to now demonstrate for you my general examination of the knee. Now let's assume our subjective examination is complete and my patient had no reports of referred pain, radicular pain, or myelopathic pain. If there were any of these indicators, we'd want to perform a full lower quarter screen as well as a slump sit. Let's start by having my patient stand up, facing me, lifting up the shorts, exposing the knees. So here I'm checking out the full general lower extremity alignment. I'm looking if there's any towing in or towing out, which could indicate uh, excessive antiversion or retroversion at the hip. I'm looking for excessive genu varus or valgus, any squinting of the patella. And I'm also checking out the subtalar joint. For example, excessive subtalar pronation can cause excessive genu valgus at the knee, leading to increased uh, tensile stress on the medial collateral ligament. So pronation is often associated with medial knee pain. We now want to perform our functional screen. Now there's a million ways a clinician can functionally screen uh, a patient who has knee pain, but for the sake of this video, we'll just choose a few. So we'll start with a deep squat. So I'm going to have my patient perform a deep squat and come up. Any pain with that? Maybe a little bit of loss of balance? <laughs> uh, so we're looking for asymmetries as the patient comes down and up, as well as any pain. Now a deep squat places a lot of uh, force on the posterior horn of the meniscus. So we've got to keep that in mind if there's pain, because that could be a, a posterior meniscal dysfunction. We then want to choose, let's say, a unilateral stance. Good, so we're looking for balance. We're looking for the navicular to slam on the floor, which could indicate a lot of excessive subtalar pronation. We're also looking for any knee pain, because this can also put a lot of pressure through the knee joint. And also if there's any hip drop. Okay, we'll check that on the other side as well, and compare. Last thing we'll do for this video, we'll do some heel walking. Heel walking puts a lot of pressure on the anterior horn of the meniscus. So pain here can be an anterior meniscal horn dysfunction. Good, and come on back. That's talent right there. Very good. All right, sit down and let's start our active exam. I'm now gonna have my patient fully extend his knee. Good, any pain? Nope. And fully flex. Pain? No pain. We're not gonna do overpressures yet because we'll do that in our passive exam. This is a great position to do our manual muscle testing in, so we're going to change up our sequence a little bit. My patient has already pre-positioned himself because he's a physical therapist, but relax for me. <laughs> Good. I'm going to position him just here and don't let me move you. Good. And relax. Good. Pull back. Good. So that's resisted flexion and extension. Then going to have him in supine. Okay. First thing we're going to do, I'm going to put this towel on Eric's stomach just to hold on right now. We're going to go for full passive flexion and full passive extension. Any pain there? Okay. Can I have the towel please? Thank you. I'm going to place this just under his knee, just like that, and we'll do patellar glides. We're going to do some medial glides, lateral, inferior, and superior. And while we're doing this, we're assessing for concordant symptoms. Any pain with that? Okay, good. We'll then do some uh, accessory mobilizations at the tibiofemoral joint. So I'm going to start by blocking the distal femur with a towel roll, and I'm going to perform an anterior to posterior glide of the tibia. While I'm doing this, this is mobilizing the anterior horn of the meniscus. So pain with this could be associated with the anterior horn meniscal dysfunction. I'm then going to move the block and block the tibia. I'm now going to perform an anterior to posterior mobilization of the femur at the tibia femoral joint. Okay. And that mobilizes the posterior horn of the meniscus. We'll get rid of our towel and bend the knee up. I'm going to sit on his foot. Tell your patient you're going to sit on their foot. I'm now going to perform shearing at the tibia femoral joint. So I'll start with a medial to lateral shear and then a lateral to medial shear. We can also perform rotational shears. Good. Any pain with that? No. No pain. After we're done with, with our complete accessory exam, we're going to go into palpation. So I can keep the knee slightly flexed. What I want to do here is just palpate anything that uh, you're thinking so far could have to do with the pathology that the patient's experiencing. So we're checking out the retinaculum. We could put our fingers in the joint line, check out the hamstring tendons, the collateral ligaments, pretty much anything that you think could be contributing to the patient's pain. And that's our palpation exam. So now that we're complete with our full exam sequence, we want to move on to a special test. And you want to refer to our special test section for the knee to select your specific special test measures that can rule in the condition with a positive test. 
and that's your full examination of the knee.